chapter is the third chapter is second Timothy verse 14 and 15. And if all of us are looking at it, let us say, amen. amen. And if you need a moment, just say, I need a moment. Second Timothy, the third chapter, verse 14 and 15. All right. We'll see there in those two verses. The scripture states, but you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood, you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you what? Wise. For what? Salvation. Through what? Faith. Which is in who? Christ Jesus. It's in who? Christ Jesus. Let me hear y'all say that one more time. I want to make sure I heard y'all correctly. Y'all said it is in who? Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. Again, we'll see those two verses. They say there, you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of knowing from whom you have learned them and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. From those two verses, I want to focus on and I want to talk about today for a thought. What do you hunger for? What do you hunger for? That is my thought for today. When I thought about this, this sermon this week, I was thinking about my mom who a few weeks ago was already talking about Thanksgiving. She already has an idea for her menu for Thanksgiving. And I don't know if y'all have already started doing it, but she's already gotten her groceries for the Thanksgiving meal. She said, I want to go ahead and try to get this stuff now because I don't want to go to the store and not be able to find any pie shells. I said, okay, makes sense to me. You know, I, I get it. What do you hunger for? Now, when I ask that question, I want y'all to understand that I ain't talking about Thanksgiving. What do you hunger for in life? That's what I'm talking about. What is it that you hunger for in life? Now, that's a, a very interesting question to, to ask. You see, my answer to that question is a lot different today than, than when I was little. You see, when I was little, Going all the way back to my days at Appleton in, in preschool and going back to my days in Adamsville in elementary school, when, when the teachers, when they would ask us, hey, what you want to be when you grow up? All of us, you know, some of us would say that we want to be the president of the United States. <laughs> we, we, we always said that one. The next one, I wanted to be a baseball player. I, was, I felt that I was pretty good with that one. You know, some of us, we, we wanted to be, you know, some famous celebrity, whether it was a movie star or or a singer. We, we wanted to be famous when we grew up. Some of us even wanted to be astronauts. We wanted to, to travel out to space. We had big dreams when we was little, didn't we? Then we started to get a little bit older, and, and I got to, to middle school. What did they call it when y'all was growing up? Junior high school? What did they call it? I can't remember. Junior high. Junior high you know, some of us, we got to middle school, and then when we did get to high school, we, and whatever it is that we wanted to do when we grew up, we just, we wanted to be rich. That's what we started to hunger for. We, we wanted to be rich and, and whatever it was that, that, that we would end up doing in a life, we just wanted to be rich. Now look at us. I'm the youngest person in the room and I'm knocking on the door of 40. So all of us, we about 40 and over, ain't we? What do you hunger for now in life? I didn't become the baseball player. <laughs> and 
Some of us, we didn't become the movie star, did we? Some of us, we didn't become the rapper. We didn't become Beyonce, right? What is it that you hunger for in life? This is something that me and my brother, we, we've been talking about for the past few weeks. And a lot of us, we would answer that question. We say, yeah, I, I want to be happy in life, right? That's what a lot of us would say. We want to be happy. But what is it that makes you happy in life, right? What makes you happy and how do you go about obtaining that happiness? What do you hunger for in life? And so, like I said, me and my brother, we, we have been talking about this subject for, for recent weeks. I, if my mom pays us any attention while we sit down eating dinner, then she will know that we have been having this discussion off and on about what it is that, that people seem to seek for in life. And here in my response to reading in my scripture for today, there in the third chapter of second Timothy, we'll see Paul speak to what it seems like people desire for in life there. We'll see that Paul, he wrote to Timothy there in the third chapter of second Timothy. He wrote to Timothy about a certain time that he said it would be perilous. He said that there will be peril in the world. And Paul, he said that in those days of peril, he said that people would be lovers of themselves and money. Hmm. Who loves money today? And Paul, he said there that people would be proud blasphemers that despise good. Proud blasphemers. And then lastly there, we'll see Paul wrote that, that people, he said, would be lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Now, I don't know what you think about what Paul says there in those verses, but for me, maybe it's just me, but those times of peril that's, that Paul spoke of there sounds like today, doesn't it? At least it sounds like that to me. Y'all said amen, so I guess y'all are in gre agreement with me there. Now, Paul didn't stop there when he, spoke, when he spoke about those days. If you flip over to the fourth chapter and you look at the third and the fourth, the fourth verse there, we'll see that Paul wrote to Timothy that there would, there would come a time when people would not endure Sound doctrine, he said. Now, as we know, sound doctrine, the sound doctrine that Paul spoke of, that's the word of God. And Paul, he said that there would be a day when people would not endure the word of God. Now, you'll see there that Paul, he did say that According to their own desires, this is what they would hunger, Paul was saying. He said that they would raise up teachers that would turn their ears away from the truth. And when he says the truth there, again, he's talking about the word of God. He's talking about the divine truth from the Lord. Paul, he said that they would have their ears turned away for fables made up stories. Again, he said there that they would raise up teachers to turn their ears away from God for made up stories. Oh, thank you, Sister Orton. That's what they're doing now, she said. Ears are turned away from God for lies. Look at that 13th verse there in the third chapter of 2 Timothy. When, when Paul was talking about the, the time of peril, he said, evil men and imposters will grow worse in those days that Paul is talking about. Deceiving and 
being deceived. <laughs> what are they being deceived from? Sounds like Paul was saying that they were being deceived from the truth. Being deceived from God. But again, these imposters. Let's be honest about the world we live in today for a moment here. We live in a world today where people, they, they gather around a cesspool. Y'all know what a cesspool is, don't you? It's a pit of waste. That's where all your waste go to when you flush it down the toilet. People, they, they seemingly gather around a cesspool today, and you would think that they wouldn't jump into a, a pit of waste, but it seems like to me, maybe it's again, it's just me, that people, they gather around this, this cesspool, and they jump head first, Thank you, Sister Horton. I, I, I'm happy you riding with me today. They, they jump head first into the cesspool. Maybe it's just me and Sister Horton that's, 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 that's riding together today on this one. Maybe it's just us that, that, that come to realize this one. You see, all it seems that, that people are interested in today is sex, lies, and drama. Everywhere you look, sex, lies, and drama. I told my brother about this. Again, like I said, me and my brother, been, we've been talking about this one for a while. I can't tell if y'all done had, I done had this one built up. But I, I, I share a sermon to YouTube. I post my video online, and then I happen to, to browse a little bit. And boy, look at what you see. Sex, lies, and drama. I share a clip of my sermon to Instagram and I scroll down. I can't even scroll Instagram really because guess what I see? Sex, lies, and drama. What is it that you hunger for in life? What is it that you live for in life today? People seem to live for picking up their phone or sitting at their computers for sex, lies, and drama. You would think that, that people would be put off by the smell and the aroma of that pit of waste, that cesspool. But guess what? People are, oh man, that, that, feed me more. Because people live for the sex, lies, and drama today rather than the divine truth, rather than the word of God, which has a sweet aroma we are all sprinting to the cesspool to stand around and sip on our drinks and, and to see who's going to dive in next. Now, I would say to y'all that, that I'm amazed by this, but I would be a liar. See, I realized quite some time ago that we are living in a period of depraved minds, depraved hearts, that is, corrupt minds, that is, corrupt hearts that they, this is all they desire to feed off off of what is depraved and what is corrupt. We should despise what is depraved. We should despise what is corrupt for again, a love for what is holy, for what is righteous, for what is good. But something that, that I've come to realize in this day and age is that, People, they don't crave what is good because they don't even know what is good. And honestly, when you think about that, that's a shame. That people don't know the difference between what is good and what is depraved. The word of God, we live in a period of time where the word of God, it is slept on. It is glossed over. It is ignored for the hunger of the depraved. Now, in the fifth chapter of Matthew's gospel and the seventh verse, Jesus, he said to the disciples in the Beatitudes, he said, blessed, that is spiritually content, are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness 
for they shall be filled. Again, Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst not for what is depraved, but hunger for what is, again, righteousness. Do you hunger for what is righteousness today? Do you hunger for righteousness? In the sixth chapter of John's gospel, Jesus, I want you to turn over to the sixth chapter of John's gospel, by the way. Jesus, he tells us of two meals that's on the menu for all of us. Everybody has to choose from, from this menu today. He tells us that there are two meals that you have an option of choosing from in this life. Which one will you hunger for today? After the miracle of feeding the 5,000, we'll see there in the 24th verse of the 6th chapter of John's Gospel that many of that great multitude that Jesus had fed with a few pieces of fish and a few pieces of bread, they sought Jesus out the day after the miracle. And when they found him, you'll see in the 27th verse that Jesus, he said to the people, do not labor for the food which perishes. Underline that food which perishes. He said, don't labor for food which perishes, but for the food which endures. Underline that. The food which endures to everlasting life. Like I said, there are two meals that you can eat from today. One of the meals is a meal which perishes. The food which perishes. And Jesus said the other meal is the meal which endures. The food which endures. What do you hunger for in life? You, you hunger for, for happiness, right? That's what you hunger for, right? Which meal do you think you should hunger for? Which meal do you think you should consume? You see, the depraved eat from one meal, and then those who desire to be, to be righteous, they, they eat from another meal. Not everybody eats the same meal in, in the world today. You see, there's a difference between the two meals, between the two foods that, that Jesus spoke of. And I want you to understand that there is a difference between these two meals so that you can understand what it is that you, which one that you should hunger for. You see, I want you to eat from a good plate. I don't want you to eat terrible food. I, I want you to be eating good, right? You know, when, when people come over to your house for Thanksgiving, you want them to be eating good. You don't you don't want them to be eating bad and then they go out and be talking about you. You want them to eat good. I, I want you to eat good. So let's take a look at, at the difference between these two meals. Let's start off. How about we start off with the food which perishes? I love starting off with the food which perishes. Now, the food which perishes, we can, we can take a look at what this meal is by taking a look at the fourth chapter of Matthew's gospel in the third verse. This is a verse that's going to be very familiar to us because I referenced this verse a lot this year. We'll see in the fourth chapter of Matthew's gospel in the third verse that the devil was up to tempting Jesus. And there in the third verse of the fourth chapter of Matthew's gospel, we'll see that scripture tells us that the devil tempted Jesus by saying to Jesus, he ought to command those stones to become bread. We're familiar with that one, right? Mm -hmm. Then, if you skip down to the 8th verse, I referenced this one a lot this year as well. We'll see that in the 8th verse, that after he failed to, to get Jesus to turn stones into bread, because Jesus was having it, we'll see that the devil, that he offered Jesus all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. The kingdoms of the world and their glory. Talking about the food which perishes. All the kingdoms of the world 
and their glory. Does the kingdom of, of this world and all of their glories, does that sound appetizing to you? Does that sound like an appetizing meal that, that you hunger for in life? You see, every time that, that I reference Satan's temptation of, of Jesus, I, I really harp on that offer there in the eighth verse. All the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And, and the reason why I do this is because that's the meal. That's the meal that, that the devil comes forward on with a silver platter and, and he sits down on the table for you to eat. He says, hey, I have a meal for you. It's all the kingdoms of the world in their glory. Take a bite of it and, and see how good it is. Is that what you hunger for today? You know, some may be wondering, well, what are what what, what is this? What, what are the glories of the kingdom of the world? What does this meal consist of? Some of us, we we may begin to wonder. Well, the glories of the kingdom of the world, is it not the riches? Is it not the splendor of this world? Is it not the, the towns, the cities, the the mountains, the, the hills, the oceans, the valleys. Is that not the kingdoms of the world and, and their glories? The gold, the silver, all of the treasures, money? See, to be clear about this, the glories of the kingdom of the world, they, they are built on wealth and power. Guess what a lot of folks hunger for today? Wealth and power. Control and authority. Power. Oh, boy. Y'all may say, ah, oh, that don't sound appetizing to me, Peter. That don't sound appetizing to me, Pastor. But I'm telling you today, you outnumbered in this world. Because the devil, he comes around with that platter and he sits it down on the table and say, hey, I'm offering you this meal to eat. And there are many today that <laughs> eating it up. Mm -hmm. They want wealth. They want power. Mm -hmm. They want the gold. They want the silver. They want the riches of this world. They want its splendor. They want the cities. They want the towns. They want USA. They want the world. Does that sound appetizing to you? Y'all said, nope, doesn't sound appetizing to me. Now, if that doesn't sound appetizing to you, then let's take a look at the food which endures. What is the food that endures? Well, again, looking there at the fourth chapter of Matthew's gospel, when we take a look at the fourth verse, Jesus, he said to Satan that, that man, that we should be living by every word that proceeds from the Lord. He said that we should be living by the word of God. Then in the 10th verse, we'll see that Jesus, he said to that old devil, he said that man should worship and man should serve the Lord and only him we shall serve. I know I got y'all turning in the Bible today. But if we turn back over to the sixth chapter of John's gospel and we look at the 35th verse, we'll see that Jesus, he said to the multitude that had sought him out after that miracle, and Jesus, he said to them, I am the bread of life. He said, he who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. 
Now, if we go up a, a, a few more verses there to the 27th verse there in the sixth chapter of John, we'll see that Jesus said, do not labor for, again, the food which perishes. He said, labor for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man, that is Christ himself, will give you. Because God the Father has set his seal on him. Well, the devil, he comes out with his tray. And Jesus comes out with his tray as well. He comes shuffling alone to the table. And he sits his tray down on the table. And on that tray is the word of God. And he says, eat of the word. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And if you don't remember what John said there, in, in the first chapter of first John, he said, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. Jesus said that I am the word. I am the bread. Eat of me, the word of God. And when you do this, Jesus said you will not perish, but you will have everlasting life. You will be holy. You will be righteous. Again, which do you hunger for? What do you hunger for in life? As I have said all year long, we should be hungering for the word of God. Not that cesspool. Not the sex lies or drama. We should be hungering for the word of God. You see... David, when it came to the word of God, he encouraged us. And he said to us, taste and see that the Lord is good. David said, blessed is the one who, who trusts in the Lord. The one who looks at the, the tray that Jesus sits down and go, you know what? I want some of that. We should hunger for the word of God. But we know that, that many of us, we, we look at the tray that Jesus sit down on the table and we look at the, the tray that the devil sits down on the table. We see his splendor. We see the glories of the kingdom of the world. And that is what appetizes us. The word of God, we say, oh, man, that looks bland. I don't want nothing that bland. I want something that looked like it's got some taste. And, and, and as we, we should know that that, again, the, the, the thing that's on the menu that looks the most tastiest for us, that looks really appetizing, that's the thing that we may need to stray away from, ain't it? There's a proverb, the 27th chapter of Proverbs in the 7th verse that I want to share with all of you today that I believe it speaks to us today. And in that proverb, in the 27th chapter of Proverbs, the 7th verse, you'll see that the proverb states that a satisfied soul loathes the honeycomb, but to a hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. Now, if, if you don't know what that proverb means, let me explain what this proverb means for you in a manner in which we can easily understand. You see, our stomach, when it growls, that means that we need to feed our stomach, right? That means that we are hungry, right? You know, we can feel that hunger in us. And, and, and when we are completely starving, we don't really care what we eat, do we? You know, we, we? We'll find something to snack on. It don't matter what it is, so long as we can put it in our belly and, and so long as that, you know, we, we can be satisfied in our stomachs, right? And, and then when we eat enough food and, and, and we get full in our stomachs, I hope that we'll push away from the table. I hope that that will push away from the table. And not only that, but dessert itself won't even seem all that pleasant to us. We'll say, oh, no, I, I don't need no more when, when we are full. So we have a bit of an understanding of that proverb already, whether you realize that or not. We understand it with that kind of mindset, a physical, a worldly mindset. But let's approach that, that proverb with a spiritual mindset. 
Again, there in the 27th chapter of Proverbs, the seventh verse, the proverb, it said, a satisfied soul loathes the honeycomb, but to a hungry soul, everything is, every bitter thing is sweet. There are many who are living in the world today that's starving in their soul. Y'all hear me? There are many who are starving in their soul today. They are hungry and for them, it does not matter what they consume spiritually speaking. It doesn't matter what they feed their soul, what they eat spiritually. They don't care. And so in that hunger, they're, they're trying to, to satisfy their soul, but they again aren't taking into consideration what exactly they're feeding their soul today. They don't care. They just know that they are hungry and they act like, like a dog that, that, that always goes around like how Ralph do at the house, always sniffing around. He'll eat whatever it is. It don't matter to him so long as he can lick and so long as he can eat. That's how many of us go around in the world today in our soul. We don't care what we eat. So long as we, we feed and, and so long as we think we are satisfying our soul. You see, again, many of us, we, we look at what Jesus, what he spoke of, what we should desire, what we should hunger for, what we should consume. But then again, most of us, we, we, we disregard that for what's most appetizing on the menu. And again, we know that what's most appetizing on the menu most of the time is the most unhealthy thing there is on the menu for us to eat. But hey, we're starving, right? And when we're starving, we ain't thinking about what's healthy and what's unhealthy. We ain't thinking about eating no salad when, when we're starving. We're looking at that big old steak and we go, ho, oh, ho, that's what I want to eat. We begin to eat with our eyes. Y'all done heard that saying before, right? And, and you know what they say about eating with your eyes. When, when you eat with your eyes, you set yourself up to be in trouble later on. You, 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 you go pay for it later on. I tell you today that, again, you and I, we need to pay very close attention to, to what we consume in our soul today. Now, we'll see here, again, as we look at our scripture for today, I want us to pay very close attention to what Paul said is the motivator behind what many of us are choosing to consume, what it is that we hunger for in life today. Again, we'll see that in the third chapter of 2 Timothy, in both the second and in the fourth verse there, that Paul said that the motivators to satisfy, satisfy one's soul would be the love of one's self there. Again, Paul said that during those times of peril that people would be lovers of themselves. In other words, they will be selfish. They will be overly selfish, consumed with themselves. He said that people will be lovers of money. You better believe there are many people that are motivated today by money. They hunger for money. They are greedy, in other words. And then Paul said that, that people will be lovers of pleasure, lust, and covetousness will drive the hunger for many in the world today to satisfy their souls. Yeah, think about this. Many people are driven to satisfy their souls today by selfishness, by greed, by lust and by covetousness, not by the word of God, but again, that cesspool. Now, I say to you today that we shouldn't be driven by our eyes when it comes to satisfying our souls. We shouldn't be eating with our eyes. But as John said in 1 John, the second chapter, the 15th and the 16th verse, 
if anyone loves the world, the love of the father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Many people today are eating with their eyes. They're eating the world. They are lusting after what the world can provide their souls. And they actually believe, they actually think that the world is satisfying their soul. They really believe that the world can saturate their souls. But sadly, in this consumption for the food that perishes, because that's what that food is, that's what that meal consists of, selfishness, greed, again, lust and covetousness, sex, lies, and drama. Many are so consumed with that food that they loathe the food that God has. Many have eaten so much of the food of the world, the food which perishes, that the food which endures unto everlasting life, it puts them off. It churns their stomachs. They loathe the food which endures unto everlasting life. As Paul said, they, they don't endure sound doctrine. We live in the midst of a time period where people loathe the word of God for the cesspool. I ask you again today, what is it that you hunger for in life? Imagine loathing the word of God, which David, David, he said that it is the word of God. It is more desirable than much fine gold. David said that the word of God, it is sweeter than honey and the honeycomb. Imagine loathing that for a pit of waste. What are you consumed with today? What is it that you hunger for in life today? What is it that you give most of your time to today? Is it partying at the cesspool or is it sitting down at the table of the Lord and consuming the word of God, consuming the bread of life? What is on your mind all of the time? Most of the time, what is on your mind now? I hope it's man. I, I need to stop consuming that food, which perishes for the word of God. I hope that's what's on your mind now. I hope what's on your mind right now is, oh boy, am I, am I consuming that food which perishes? Is that what I am consumed with today? I need to repent as we saw in the Sunday school lesson today. I need to move in repentance because God is showing me mercy right now. I need to move now in repentance before time runs out. Ask yourself today, is God first in your life? Is the way of God first in your life? Is God your top priority or is it consuming the sex, lies, and drama? You see, what you are consumed with, what you give most of your heart to, what you give most of your time to, I want you to understand that's what you feed your soul today. And if you feed your soul corruption, guess what will happen to your soul? You see, you can't eat unhealthy and then somehow be healthy. You, you can't eat unhealthy, spiritually speaking, and think that your soul is going to be in good health. Don't be a fool. Don't, don't try to trick yourself. Don't try to deceive yourself. That's what I focused on all last month. And because I focused on that all last month, we know better than that. You see, for your sake today, I hope, I hope that you're not consumed with trying to satisfy your soul with the food which perishes. 
because that food, it will do no good for your soul. Now, when Paul, when he expounded on this thought, uh, what one would choose to consume in life, when he spoke about consuming the food which perishes, we'll see that Paul, he stated that those who are led away by various lusts, that they end up becoming men who are of depraved, they are of corrupt minds. We'll see there in the third chapter of Second Timothy and the seventh verse that Paul, that he said that those who are consumed with the food which perishes, that they would never come to the knowledge of the truth. How could they? They aren't eating the food that will lead them to the knowledge of the truth. He said there in the ninth verse that they would not progress any further. You, you cannot consume the food which perishes and grow and mature in your being. And yeah, like I said last month, we are supposed to be a child of God. But if you are consuming the food which perishes, you cannot grow and mature in being a child of God. If you are consuming the food which perishes, you're not going to become wise unto salvation. If you consume the food which perishes, you are not going to mature in your faith. What in the world are you thinking? You cannot live as a sinner and then think that you are a child of God. I want you to understand there is no gray when it comes to the Lord. God is the light. Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. And I want you to understand, there is no darkness in the light. The light, it chases away the darkness. Again, you can't eat from the plate of one and eat from the plate of another at the same time. It don't work that way. You have to choose this day. The food that perishes, I want you to understand today that that's not food that can nourish your soul. What do you hunger for in life? I hope it's not that food. So if that food that perishes can't nourish our soul, why do we put so much time into to consuming that food? Why, why is it that we crave that food? Why is it that we live for that food? If it does nothing for your soul, why are you consumed with mess? If it does nothing for your soul, and you know it does nothing for your soul, why are you, the child of God, running to the cesspool? You see, many, I want you to understand today, are eating unhealthy food spiritually, and all they are doing is killing their soul. Many are eating unhealthy food today, and I say to you today that they don't even take into consideration their spiritual health. They don't take it seriously. They hear the word of God, they know of the word of God, and Again, they laugh off the word of God. They mock the word of God. They are like someone who has been told by a doctor that if you continue to, to live this way, you won't have long to live. You continue to put yourself in poor health and they'll say, ah, oh, doc, I don't care. That is not how anybody should be living today. When God gave his only begotten son to the world to rebuke the world, to tell all of us that we are living in poor health. And in order for us to live in good health, we need to turn to him. It does us no good to sit in, ah, whatever God, to wave God off. Who are we to wave off the Lord when he comes to our table and sits down before us the word of God and say, consume this and you will live for all of eternity with me. Who are we to wave him away? And to say, no, Lord, I want to eat unhealthy today. I want to keep on eating unhealthy today. You see, I, 
I say to all of you today that I have, I have come, I don't know about you, but I have come to despise the food that perishes. I, I have come to despise it because I know of the food of God. I know of the word of God and, and I know what the word of God, what it does for me. Am I perfect? No, I'm far from perfect. But I know that that when I consume the food of the Lord, that that the Lord, he loves me. And that in his love, the Lord said, come to me. And, and, and acknowledge the wrongs that you have done, confess them to me. And the Lord said to me that he will work with me. God, he doesn't care that that I'm not perfect. The Lord said, I still love you, son. And I am going to work with you all the days of your life. Just keep on consuming what it is that I have for you to consume. Well, the devil, the devil couldn't care less. The devil don't care when you, when you fall into sin and when you are miserable, when you are living in poor health spiritually, the devil will keep on telling you to keep on eating. God don't care. All of God's children today, I tell you that we should despise the food which perishes. We, we should despise the glories of the kingdom of this world. We, we should despise the, the, the silver, the gold of this world. We should despise the, the treasures of this world. We should despise the, the riches of this world. You see, I know this because Jesus, he told us this. Again, Jesus, he said that in the sixth chapter of Judge's gospel that you and I, we ought not be laboring for the food which perishes. He said that we should be laboring for the food which endures unto everlasting life. So I tell you today that it bothers me when I see so many of us. And when I say us, I'm talking about God's children. It bothers me when I see so many of us consumed with the food which perishes, sitting down at the table of sin and eating off the plate that the devil serves. It bothers me. It hurts me when I let somebody know that there is better food to eat. And they say, okay, pastor. And they, they turn away and they keep on eating from, from the, the plate of the devil. That bothers me. I don't know what it does for you. So we'll see there in my key verse for today. There in the 14th verse where Paul, he encouraged us. He said that, that we must continue in the things that we have learned and that we have been assured of. Knowing from whom we have learned them. What is it that, that we have learned? Well, we have learned the word of God. Who is it that shared the word of God with us? It was Christ. It was God himself. Yes. My dad preached to me. Yes, Reverend Taylor preached to me. Yes, I went to Sunday school and learned from, from flesh and blood. But we have to remember that it was God who gave us his word. And not only did the Lord give us his word, his only begotten son, but he gave us his Holy Spirit as well, who abides with us. And let us remember the role that the Holy Spirit plays in our life today. In the 16th chapter of John's gospel, Jesus said that the Holy Spirit leads us unto all truth. And when he said that the Holy Spirit leads us unto all truth, he isn't talking about the world's truth. He's not talking about subjective and objective truths. He's talking about the divine truth. The Holy Spirit ministers to us around the clock. The Holy Spirit, should you choose to, to heed the, the voice of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is always transforming your heart from that corrupt heart into a healthy heart. And when I'm talking about your heart, again, I am talking about your soul. Again, I ask you today, what do you hunger for? We'll see there in the second of my key verses there in the 15th verse that, that Paul said that from childhood, we have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make us wise for salvation through faith, 
which is in Christ Jesus. Notice there. I want you to notice there that Paul didn't say that it was the glories of the kingdom of the world that will make you wise for salvation unto everlasting life. It's not the splendor of the world. It's not the world's riches. It's not the power that you think you can gain in the world that will lead you unto salvation. Paul said it was the, the Holy Scriptures, the bread of life, the word of God that you should consume that again will make you wise for salvation. I tell you today that you can spend every waking moment craving, lusting, coveting for the riches of this world, for all the sex, lies, and drama. But I want you to understand, none of those things are going to get you into heaven. You can spend every waking moment lusting after money, after greed, grinding and hustling your butt off for money. But all that grinding and hustling for money, that money ain't going to get you into the kingdom of heaven. It's not going to make you wise unto salvation. You see, the Lord, he calls on us to push away from the table of sin. I call on you today. Push away from the table of sin. Push away from the food which perishes. As Paul said there in the third through the fifth verse, turn away from those that are depraved in their hearts, that believe they have a form of godliness. Turn away from them. Turn away from the lies. Turn away from the deceptions. Turn away from the imposters. And I say to you today, hunger for life eternal. Hunger for true happiness, peace and contentment in the kingdom of our Lord. By now, by now, your, your, your taste should have matured. By now, we should have already turned away from the world. But it's a struggle for us. But in that struggle, again, Heed the voice of the Holy Spirit. And as we were when we were little children, when our mom and our dad had to keep trying to force feed us, let the Holy Spirit force feed you today. And again, as I said all year long, when you consume the word of God, you will become holy. You will become righteous. You will become what those who eat the food which perishes, you will become what they think they are today. As I said last month, you will become all powerful in your true identity as a child of God. Amen. 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 Thanks for watching this week's sermon. I hope that you enjoyed this sermon and that you'll be able to apply what you have watched, that you have heard, that you have listened to, apply it to yourself and then share it with somebody somewhere. And if you haven't done so already, make sure that you're following the newfound faith channel. Be sure that you're following today so that you don't miss a sermon, so that you don't miss a Sunday school lesson, a Bible study, or a food for thought. And if you haven't done so already, make sure that you share the Newfound Faith channel with someone somewhere.